All right, this is my uh, newly acquired P228. It's the SIG compact version of uh, the P226. And this one, I was uh, piqued my interest when I saw it at the gun shop because of its prevalent use in military application and uh, law enforcement application as well. Uh, the history uh, is kind of similar to Beretta uh, in that they were both vying for uh, the replacement of the 1911. I believe the service pistol tests were done in 84. So the two contestants were the Beretta 92 or M9 and the SIG 226 and uh, I believe the Breda won out over this beautiful beast because uh, the pricing of the packaging, spare parts, magazines, sub-assemblies pretty much uh, was cheaper in relation to the SIG package. But later on uh, the military did end up utilizing it in again applications and uh, it its nomenclature was the M11 and uh, I don't know it's favorite I know these were issued out to pilots preferred these due to compact nature these are pretty much a P226 but chopped barrel length shorter slide obviously shorter barrel and uh, shorter sight radius Sight radius is the distance between rear and front, if you weren't already familiar with that. It's got the dot post sights. I mean, it's this thing gets on target with ease. Very nice to shoot. I believe the uh, geometry of the P228 uh, varies from the 226 in that the, it's not as angular, so it's easy to conceal. And uh, I mean, this was this is a great find. I'm really glad I found this. I'm stoked. This has the Picatinny rail, accessory rail. You can mount light, laser. But if you watch my other video about the laser, I'm not a big fan of that. And uh, during the time, uh, this did have a leg up over Beretta because Beretta has the uh, dual safety decocker switch as opposed to this which allows the operator to single action where the trigger actuates only the hammer release or and gives the operator the option to use the decocker which is located right here great ergonomic spot for the thumb just swipe it down with your thumb release hammer goes up now the trigger turns into double action so the trigger both cocks the hammer with the pull and releases the hammer discharges around expends projectile so i mean that's that's good to go it's a great gun feels great in the hand i mean can't beat this i was a big fan of glocks i thought they felt good in my paws but this little bastard is good to go big old mag release right here I've noticed on the range that, I mean, quick transitions are quite easy. Another thing to note is the manufacturer of the slide is carbon steel manufacturing. I believe the earlier ones were two pieces and they're welded together, all the internals and whatnot. Later on, uh, it's all just solid stock. But this is the precursor to the 229. And the SIG 229 was chambered originally in 357 SIG, which is like 40,000 PSI out of the barrel compared to this, which is 9 millimeter, which is about, I don't know, let's say 34 approximately. You guys correct me. I believe that's correct, though. So, I mean, you can't go up from a 9 barrel conversion wise, but from the 229. With that platform already established, they were able to go down to a nine, 
thereby negating the 228 platform. So, I mean, this is pretty cool to have in the collection. So, to break it down, you have the slide catch located right here. So, that being locked to the rear, you just rotate the turn lever down and slides out. Now, this is pretty sweet because it's a railed frame. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with Glocks, but Glocks have very, like maybe an inch and an inch, let's just say two inches on either side of the frame of contact points between the frame and the slide, whereas this one runs the whole length of it, giving the system far greater efficiency, whereas reducing the variables of movement and whatnot. All right, so we got that. This is the lower trigger assembly. I gotta clean this as well. This is actually the first time I'm cleaning it. So here we go, we have the, feels almost like aluminum. It could be just thin steel. Got the guide rod. We got the recoil spring. So it's again, similar to Beretta in that separate guide rod. And it's not all self-contained like you would find in a Glock. And again, you got the firing pin all housed in the slide barrel, whatnot. Just a constant semi automatic. Pluses for semi automatics are uh, capacity. I believe this one's 13 plus one, whereas the SIG 226 is 15 plus one. But the, again, uh, it's a good thing about the compact size is it can utilize its bigger brother's food source. So you can feed it larger mags as well. So large capacity, good selling point for semi-automatics. So we got the slide. We got the recoil spring, guide rod. Got the barrel. That's a pretty interesting looking lug. Barrel, and we got the lower receiver. All right, and to put it back together, I'm gonna clean it after this, but I'll just do this for shits and giggles. You put the spring flat end seated into the slide, and then you put the uh, that guy rested up against the lug. Goes all the way back, lock it, slide it back, decock, good to go. Beautiful gun. If you come across it, great price. I mean, I, I found a great deal on this, so I had to jump on it. I'm thinking about getting the Hogue aluminum grips, because the grips actually wrap around the rear portion of the hand. So, I mean, this just feels good all the way around. You get texturing. Good purchase on it. The plus about the 228 is the food source. Again, I mentioned earlier that uh, having 13 plus 1, 15 plus 1 is preferable in a semi automatic, but having a ubiquitous around like the 9mm. just found everywhere is definitely a plus fast moving it's proven combat so can't go wrong it's good to go you got your cocking serrations only on the rear portion of it just the lines on this gun outstanding i, I could bullshit about it for a while well thanks for watching Arr.